Hello, my fellow sleuths. I think we have a really good show with death and other details on who is starring Mandy Patinkin. I've watched the first two episodes twice, so I've got a couple ideas about what is possibly going on. Spoilers for the first two episodes, and I'm not going to recap what happened. I'm just going to go straight into the theories. I'm having issues with OBS, so I'm not able to overlay this video with frames from the episode, but I do have some frames from the trailer. So I'm going to talk about what I've been able to figure out, what I think is going on from episodes one and two, and some things I've been able to figure out with the trailer. Let's get decoding. My biggest theory, I think Imogen, our protagonist, is actually our antagonist. Part of the story revolves around her mother being killed when she was 10, and I don't trust her or anything that she says. She's 28 now, and she's been shown to be a clever person, even when she was a child, but for some reason, she frames Coates worth telling her that Victor Sams, the alias of the person who brought some of the components of the bomb that killed her mother, is someone who had it out for the Colliers, a mother's employer and her adopted family. I mean, it seems pretty obvious to me that her mother wasn't anyone special, not in a bad way, but she was just a secretary. There's no reason for anyone want to kill her. And if someone did, it was likely because of something to do with her employer. And Imogen is talking to Cotsworth in a way as if she's never thought of this before. And I think it's pretty obvious that had to be something she has at least thought of in the past and probably came around to figuring out. I think Imogen is trying to get back at the Colliers and likely Cotsworth also for failing to figure out who and why her mother was killed. Now let's get into the death of Danny and why I think Imogen is complicit in it and her likely partner in it is Winnie Go. When we first meet the victim, he's Keith Trubitsky and later we found out his name is actually Danny and he is a partner of Rufus Coatsworth, the famous detective. I will only refer to him as Danny from here forward to stop any confusion. But when Winnie accidentally spills a drink on his watch, which he mocks her for, resulting in what made to look like frustration of Danny punching down on this woman, Imogen goes to have a word with him for berating the staff. At the same time, she swipes his room card and she uses it around 2 a.m. that night to enter his room where she steals some money and smashes his watch. And when she exits his room, she looks right up at the camera as if she didn't know it was there. Though this looks bad, this gives her a perfect alibi in the eyes of the detective, who she has a past with and thinks fondly of her. Coatsworth thinks she's innocent, knowing that Danny died after Imogen left the room, and the smash watch is a pretty good way to establish what time you were there, and in turn, he would likely think she had nothing to do with the crime. But let's go back. Before Winnie spilled the drink on Danny, she looks back at Imogen twice. And this is the catalyst of all of these events. What really sealed the deal for me is the manner in which the killer got in and out of Danny's room. This is the same way we see Imogen hiding when she's 10 years old and Cotsworth is telling the Colliers the alias Victor Sams she was hiding in a bar cart then, and the killer is hiding in a bar cart now. Even more, the day that her mother died, she was scolded by her mother for stealing a miniature bar cart figurine with the secret compartment from Anna, her friend at the time, and her mother told her that she had to put it back. Her mother also stated that this miniature figurine was a replica of the one in the Collier's Den. Imogen has a history of stealing as a child. She stole a book from the library, the aforementioned miniature bar figurine, and as an adult, Cotsworth stated that he already knew that Imogen has been skimming from the family firm. The Colliers gave her a home, a job. Most of her expenses are likely written off. Why does she need to steal money from them? I think it's because she needs to buy something that they can't know about. 
a hit. This is where Winnie, Teddy Go's sister, Teddy Go is the maitre d', this is where her little sister comes into the story. Teddy tells Winnie that there's something that all of these people have that protects them that they do not, and that's money. So it could be the money skin from the color family that Imogen is using to pay Winnie to kill Danny. She is someone who is small enough to fit in the bar cart. Cotsworth puts out the question, who would want Keith Trubitsky dead? But I don't think anyone would. But someone might want Danny dead if they knew who he was and he was finding out information about what was going on. Maybe Imogen wanted him dead as the way to force Cotsworth to finally figure out what happened to her mother. Danny is the one that got Cotsworth a job to be on the boat in the first place. It would be a very cool play to show Imogen figuring out something that Cotsworth already knew and then later finding out that Imogen actually already knew this because she's the one who put it together and maybe even that Cotsworth had figured this out but he was stringing her along in order to figure out what she was actually doing. Maybe there's too many layers there, but it's an idea that I have. I don't know who Victor Sams is, the entity he works for, or the person, but something tells me that they are on the boat. Jules, the head of security, could be associated with the crime syndicate. As we see at the end of episode two, he's not who he seems. Even if I'm wrong, Danny's death had to be premeditated to an extent. Only people who work on the boat would know that that bar cart goes to a spot that there is no cameras. The guests on this boat wouldn't know this. Someone on the inside had to do it, or at least help. I will admit I'm not exactly sure why the governor, Alexandra, would call a bar cart to his room, Danny's room. It could be about that person he stated that she took money from that she shouldn't have. I think that name he was hoping to hear, she, he said, hey, I want to hear you say the name out loud. I think that name is Victor Sams. Winnie is the person who would get the information that the governor, or as she said, an American female voice called from this room. We don't even know if she's lying. Another small detail I figured out, this may be unrelated, but when Imogen goes to Danny's room, there is a woman with a hat who's hiding her face from the camera. We don't know who this is because we barely see just the bottom half of her face. This could be Winnie in civilian clothing as to not get attention to what she's doing, or it could be someone else. But I think whoever that is will come into play. Those are my ideas about the episode itself. Now, there's some more things that I figured out from this episode, but it goes along with some things that I found out in the trailer. And there's some other things that happens later in the episode that I saw in the trailer. But if you don't want anything to be spoiled whatsoever beyond the first two episodes, turn away now. I'm not going to be bad, but we're going to get into it. One of the smallest things first is that we see the lawyer tied up in the closet at the end of episode two. He's got a gag in his mouth. And at first I thought this was some kind of like kidnapping but earlier, well, actually in episode one, when Cotsworth is talking to him, we see a bruise around his wrist. Now, I was wondering what that had to do with anything until I looked at the trailer and there appears to be a man who I'm guessing is this lawyer with a woman doing some type of BDSM role playing. So him in the closet, I'm pretty sure is just him getting his rocks off in the way that he likes to do it. I don't know who this lady is. Um, she's got longer hair. If it's anyone, I'm guessing that it may be Teddy Go, but we really have no idea of figuring out who it is. She has a mask on. Also at the end of episode two, Cotsworth mentions that the lawyer and the maitre d pass a suitcase to each other, or actually, he passes it to her and they never mentioned it when he interviewed them. Now, we had no idea what this is about, but in the trailer, we see that they are passing off suitcases to different rooms and there is at least five suitcases that are given out to different people. 
I don't know what's in these suitcases, but later in the trailer, we see what looks like a bunch of poker chips. Now, I'm just assuming that that is what's in these cases, even though there's no proof. We don't see the case open up to see that's what's in there. But I think that maybe some of these rich and powerful people were invited to a private poker game. And maybe the Colliers is using this game as a way to attempt to win some money so they can further their empire and their firm and what they're doing. In the trailer, we also see Imogen deciphering some code on a window. And at first, I thought this was possibly from Danny's notebook because maybe she had found it. But at the top of the window, we see the word truth. And we know that this is Cotsworth's key to his cipher. And in it, we see a couple words, brunch and dining room, more Collier slash Chun tension. Now, I thought it was pretty interesting that Imogen would get Cotsworth notebook and try and figure out what he's thinking and what he's writing. So maybe they're not trusting each other as much as they should be or what would appear to be. But in the next shot is where things get confusing. We see more of the window and more of the code. And I was able to see the word go as in Teddy or Winnie go. Another word that is not transcribable. And then the word brunch again. Now, when I say this word is not transcribable, it's because it doesn't work with the cipher. There are some letters that she transposed into what it would be, but she omitted some letters that she knows what they are, like their letter T. She did not transcribe it because that would go to a Q and this would just be nonsense words. So it looks as if there are two keys to this cipher and she only knows one of them. So maybe this is Danny's notebook. I don't know. Further down, um, I can also, if it is correct, translate the word con. There are two other things I want to talk about from the trailer, but I feel like they could be pretty big spoilers. Um, so if you don't want to see it, but again, they are in the trailer. So it's, it's open to see if you just look at it on YouTube. Um, first, that there appears to be at least one more death. Um, we see a guy falling off of the side of the ship into the water. I'm assuming they die. It's a pretty big ship and I don't think they will survive. We can't see who it is, but they look like a male with short hair, maybe lighter. I am assuming that is probably Lawrence Collier and his dad and the head of this family who is retiring. Later in the trailer, we see Anna on her knees at a pool and there's a body in the water. Now, at first, I thought it was her wife, but if you look closely, it looks as if we can see some of the hair at the bottom of the frame and it looks like it's blonde and there aren't many characters with blonde hair on the show at least that we see that Anna would cry over. One of them is her mother, Catherine Collier. So I believe that Anne's parents both will die before the series ends. And again, it would make sense if Imogen is behind this and she finds out that they are responsible for it in some way or another, that she will do them in. And I also think that Victor Sams is on the boat and he's probably taking part in all of this Meshagosh, but I don't know. Those are my thoughts on the show. Let me know what you think. Do you have any theories? Are you, do you think Imogen is not as clean as she seems she is? What do you think about Winnie being her partner in this crime? Let me know your thoughts down below. I'll be doing a review for episode three when it comes out on Wednesday morning, and we'll have some theories. And we'll take the show to the end. I like it a whole lot. It's a straightforward murder mystery, just drama, no comedy, a lot like an Ethica Christie story. So you got me right there. Either way, thank you guys for watching. So I wasn't able to get too many frames from the show, but hopefully I can fix my OBS and hopefully this microphone's audio isn't too bad and it's something good to work with. I had to try and record this really quick while I'm on my lunch break at work. 
But thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time. I can't catch you on the rooftop. I'll catch you in the galley. Thank you.